Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for the warm welcome in California. I mean, the weather is nice. In Switzerland, it's raining. But also, on the, from the human side, it was a warm welcome. Out in the lobby and even on the street, people came to me and told that they thank for the work I've done. And this was touching to me. The trust I feel for in my person and what I've done. So I'm Peter Gasser. I am 53 years old. And as Neil Goldsmith told, I have a pri uh, private practice in psychiatry and uh, psychotherapy. I'm father of three children and grandfather of three children and godfather of three children. So <laughs> the number of three seems to be important here. And <coughs> I was smiling this morning because in my, when I prepared the presentation, I also came with a question the same that Bob Jesse told you this morning. Why did you come here? But um, other than Bob Jesse, I suppose an answer already that you are here because you had positive experiences with mind-altering drugs. What I mean is, and the title is Psychedelic Science, but uh, among us, maybe the majority, and you don't have to raise your hands to give a coming out in your consumption of illegal drugs, but I believe that the majority among us is here because we had meaningful experiences um, with mind-altering drugs, um, something that opened up some uh, in us and we didn't um, forget this and that made us come here. And uh, I've even prepared a second question, why did I come here? I mean, there's an obvious question, I've been invited by MAPS, but I'm here for the same reason as you. Um, when I was 28 years old, there was, um, I had a, a luck, I was a lucky person in Switzerland. It was possible to treat uh, legally with MDMA and LSD for some psychiatrists, and this was the time um, that changed my life, really. Um, my first experience was like a lightning and a thunder in my life. And what I learned from my first experiences was that feelings are really uh, in your body. It's not a kind of concept which I believed before, but it's something that happens within me. And, of course, that helped in my profession as a psychiatrist. And also, um, this kind of awakening, I, f I, I brought to you um, a poem from the Celaladin Rumi, a uh, poet and mystic from Turkey, um, and he was born in Iran, and it's about awakening, and I hope that you agree with me that this kind of awakening is not limited to LSD. Of course, Rumi didn't know about that, but um, it's something that happens to many people of us when we are uh, get involved with these substances. I am too far away from the, from the screen, so ha you have to read it on your own, but I'm sure you can. And um, this, this little poem about awakening. On the left hand, you see Albert Hoffman at the age of 100. Uh, of course, we can say he was he was awakened person as well. Um, this slide, you know it from this morning also, Lucius um, Wertmüller and Dieter Hagenbach have shown it. We celebrate Bicycle Day today. It is 70 years that uh, LSD was discovered. Albert Hoffman created the LSD in 1938, and he discovered it five years later. And uh, Lucius Wertmüller told Albert didn't know exactly why he didn't did synthesize it again in 1942. Uh, 43, and sometimes he told, it was not me uh, who found the LSD. LSD found, uh, LSD came for finding himself, and maybe this, this was his way to explain um, what he didn't know exactly. Um, when LSD was uh, invented in, in uh, or commercialized after 1943, under the name Delicid. Um, it was a so-called semi-synthetic 
compound. That means that meant that not every compound could be synthesized in the, in the laboratory. The lysergic acid was extracted from the grains of the ergot mushroom. You see it on uh, is growing on rye, and uh, these are the the black gray the black grains. And I have prepared some participants histories from my study and participant number seven was a, a woman born in 19 uh, she is a woman born in 1949 she's still alive she's suffering from breast cancer and um, she grew up in the rural part of switzerland in the central region emmental and she told me that in her when she was a child um, her parents, they grew the, the ergot mushroom for the Santos company. So when it was harvested um, in, in summer, then it was shivered through uh, a kind of metal mesh and the black grains, who they called wolf teeth, um, fell down. And uh, nowadays they remained in the mesh and, and the grains of the rye fell down. But the, the rye was not pure then, so they had on, on long winter evenings, they had just to separate the yellowish rye grains from the wolf teas. And she said that she had to do this work uh, for, uh, several years. At the end, in end of 1950s, then Santos made it entirely synthetical. And now this woman, she had never tried LSD in her life before, 50 years later. She was um, in the study, and then she made um, connection to LSD. And what, she, what did she say to, um, 12 months after finishing uh, the treatment? I tried to, to read it. In the, uh, she did the interview, not with myself, with an interviewer. When you look back from what you profit the most, she said, from the effect of the substance. It is really difficult to explain, but it was something that had that I had not experienced before and that really opened certain doors. It was very fast and easy. It helped a lot. I had therapies earlier also during the cancer. That is nothing new, but the substance is. Um, well, well, from 2007 to 2012, I had the opportunity to do this LSD psychotherapy study um, which is called, uh, the title is LSD-assisted psychotherapy in persons suffering from anxiety associated with advanced stage life-threatening diseases. In, in 2006, for the 100th birthday of Albert Hoffman, there was this um, symposium, this conference in Basel. And after the conference, we started um, with the help, help of MAPS to, to make the protocol. And at the end of 2007, we got the uh, approval for it. So it is a placebo-controlled, randomized, double-blind, phase two pilot study. Th that means if you want to uh, um, get the LSD for a medicament new, you have to do all these studies Rick was explaining. So this w it, it implies that that should be the first step for becoming LSD uh, for instance, a, pre a, pres a prescription medicine. I have a kind of other opinion. I will tell you later what I'm thinking, what will be the future. But nevertheless, we designed the, the study this way. And when it was approved, um, Albert Hoffman was still alive. And this picture shows him at his 102nd birthday. And one month before, um, in December 2007, he gave an interview to the main Swiss news station um, for the news and I want to show you just a very short part of this of this interview it is in Swiss German you don't won't get it but uh, I mean you get the spirit of Albert Hoffman and what what he is saying is that it is a long wish uh, a fulfillment of a long wish now that this do, the, um, that LSD becomes again a member in the healing art of medicine, a nice expression, the healing art of medicine or the medical healing art. So can you please show the video? Was Albert Hoffmann besonders freut, der Mann, der LSD vor bald 70 Jahren zufällig entdeckt hat. Das ist für mich 
Die Erfüllung von einem ganz grossen Wunsch war. Ich habe gedacht, das wird ich mal erleben, dass LSD den Platz noch findet, wo es auch nicht gehört, nämlich in die menschliche Heilkunde. In einem Monat feiert Albert Hofmann seinen 102. Geburtstag. Heute feierte er die Rehabilitierung seiner Erfindung LSD. You easily can imagine this was like a blessing over my work I did from then on. Four months later he died then, before we treated the first patient, unfortunately. Um, let's talk about the scientific background of the work I did. And as English is not my mother tongue language, I have prepared a, a text. I will read it. I hope you apologize for that. So... Um, the action of LSD psychologically and biologically. Oral doses of more than 100 microgram LSD produce intense perceptional and psychological changes, including increased sensory perception and enhanced mental imagery. All emotional awareness is intensified. Thinking is faster with reduced ability of logical thinking, but inducing enhancement of visionary creative and intuitive thinking. Ego identification is weakened or lost. These psychological changes last for six to nine hours and can be used to support and enhance psychotherapeutic processing. LSD's effect on brain functioning are complex and not fully understood. LSD influences different neurotransmitter systems, but its psychosensory effects are mainly mediated by activation of the 5-HT2A serotonin receptors, but LSD also activates dopamine and other neurotransmitter systems. The devel development of psychotherapy with mind-manifesting drugs started in the 1950s and developed into two primary approaches, the psycholytic and the psychedelic. The psycholytic, psycholytic method was primarily conceptualized by Leuner and mostly practiced in Germany. He used lower doses and more frequent sessions designed to enhance the standard psychotherapeutic process. The psychedelic method was primarily conceptualized by Hubbard Groff and others and was mostly practiced in the US. They used higher doses, fewer sessions, and aimed at the involvement of a spiritual or mystical experience along with moments of intense catharsis. At present, the term psycholytic is known only by insiders, while the term psychedelic has become widespread, not only in reference to psychotherapy, but also identified with the cultural movement. In our study, the approach used was an integrative model of psycholytic, psychedelic, and spiritual meditative elements, for example, body awareness, mindfulness exercises, etc. The treatment um, of end-stage cancer patients. A trial in 1963 first found efficacy for LSD for reducing anxiety, depression, and pain in participants with end-stage cancer. This was followed by systematic studies at the Mar Maryland Psychiatric Research Center in Baltimore. These studies treated more than 100 end-stage cancer participants, established the approach, and demonstrated safety as much as promising results. Most research into LSD-assisted psychotherapy came to a halt when LSD was made illegal in the U.S. in 1966 and in all other countries in the world in the following years. After a long period of almost total cessation of research with mind-altering drugs, the group with Roland Griffiths, Bill Richards, and collaborators in Baltimore started with projects to investigate psilocybin-assisted psychotherapy around the year 2000. The treatment paradigm set setting substance. Set two 60 to 90 minute preparatory psychotherapy sessions served for the participant and co-therapists to discuss the participant's history, social situation, personality, health and emotional situation, also known by the term SET. These preliminary sessions prepared the participant for the LSD experience by explaining the expected action of LSD, the structure of the setting, 
and by answering questions. Furthermore, these preparatory sessions serve to build a confidential participant-therapist relationship and help to determine the entire course of treatment and the content of experimental sessions. Setting. The physical environment the LSD-assisted experimental sessions took place in was a safe, quiet, and pleasant room in a private practice office. The participant was advised, advised to lay on a mattress on the floor or sit comfortably in a chair. Other than going to the bathroom, participants remained in the treating, treatment room for the entire eight-hour experimental session as well as overnight with an attendant nearby. The uh, uh, experimental intervention. Following prepar preparatory sessions, two LSD-assisted experimental sessions took place, scheduled at least one month apart. On the morning of the experimental sessions, the participants arrived at the office at 9 a.m. for a short discussion about their current mood and mental state, along with a urine test to check for the presence of other drugs. LSD or active placebo was, ad was administered at 10 a.m. Participants were instructed to focus their awareness and mindful attention inwards in order to follow their personal process of perception, emotion, and cognition. Participants were told that about two-thirds of the time there would be silence or brief conversation, and about one-third of the time music would be played to deepen a silent self-awareness. Gentle bodywork was offered if appropriate for the participant. The therapeutic sessions lasted for eight hours until 6 p.m. when the acute effects almost had subsided. A light dinner was offered and a brief review of the day's journey took place. At 7 p.m., the co-therapist went home and the overnight attendant arrived. After each experimental session, two non-drug integrative psychotherapy sessions took place, during which the participant's experiences were reviewed to enable him to integrate and deepen the therapeutic process. Two months after the second experimental session, a follow-up evaluation was completed and the study was finished by breaking the blind. Patients who received the active placebo could cross over to an open-label treatment with 200 micrograms LSD. It is to say that additional um, psychotherapy sessions could be uh, scheduled at any time of the process. Uh, this diagram is not that much important for you. Um, it says that we had um, about 70 people calling if they could participate uh, the study. 58 we have we had to um, withdraw because of several reasons. They didn't have a life-threatening disease, or they could not speak German enough because all the testings were in, in German or other for other reasons. And the 12 remaining participants were um, assigned to two groups, four to the placebo group and eight to the full dose group, and with the possibility of the crossover when the placebo phase uh, was finished. Um, what we did, you see well, a, a kind of timetable here. We at, at baseline, we uh, had an independent rater who was also blind for the uh, for the treatment condition, and we made just uh, in and exclusion um, if they could really participate, and we made the psycho uh, psychometric testings uh, in total six times, even at the 12 months follow-up. After every uh, LSD session, they had to do the states of consciousness questionnaire, which gives information about quality and intensity of the LSD uh, session. And you see the conventional psychotherapy who just uh, ar was around the two LSD treatments. Uh, the objective of the study was to show mainly three things. I mean, uh, it is about efficacy and safety. And for efficacy, we said that um, people coming to the treatment who had LSD will have less anxiety than they had before the treatment. For this uh, served the Spielberger state and tried 
anxiety inventory as a main outcome measure. And then uh, we also assumed that quality of life will uh, improve in, um, due to that treatment. And we had um, a, a, a questionnaire from the European Organization for the Research and Treatment of Cancer. Unfortunately, this questionnaire focuses very much on physical um, factors of quality of life and for our purposes not enough on uh, psychological um, factors. So this was not, we have to say, not that much a good choice. And then we made safety measures. Um, we collected um, all severe adverse events and also adverse events um, during the whole time of the treatment and we made um, uh, while the, the LSD session took place, uh, blood pressure and heart rate we were measuring. We made also additional measures with, uh, which are not so important for, for this presentation now. Um, pay, the, the participants filled out daily diaries uh, where they um, checked how, what, what was going on with the pains. We made the follow-up in, uh, follow interview and two additional measures, the symptom checklists for psychological uh, psychopathological symptoms in general and another anxiety measure. Let's go other, have a look at the results of what we have done. Um, I show you some participants characteristics first then let's talk about efficacy of these small number I treated and um, something about safety and then um, we have a look at the states of consciousness questionnaire. Um, when you look at the top, you see that uh, the mean age is um, is 14 is um, 51.0 for the whole group. That means um, we treated people from the second half of life, which is not surprising. Um, I mean, life-threatening diseases like cancer are mainly diseases of the second half of life. Although um, in the inclusion criteria, we said we would treat people. Uh, above 18. And what is interesting that 11 out of 12 participants had no experience with LSD before. Only one uh, person, a woman uh, liv living in Berlin at that time, 40 years ago, had some experiences with LSD. Um, here you see that 9 out of 12 uh, participants suffered from a carcinoma um, diseases and uh, the other three from other life-threatening disease. It is important to say that the ethical committee they didn't want a treatment of end-stage or so-called final patients so we did not help the people die um, we ha because the ethics committee said they want to make sure that people can um, make the treatment by their free will and when they are too near uh, at the at death they assumed maybe they would not be so free for that um, so the topic was more and and it showed in the in the psychotherapy we did it showed um, what the most concerns um, people had was not uh, the immediate dying but what will I do with my life with the restricted time I have which people do I meet and uh, especially also to whom do I, I don't want to have contact anymore? These were far more the topics. Um, seven had an anxiety disorder and the other five had a, a kind of uh, scoring which was above 80 scoring points in the STI anxiety inventory um, so uh, that we could measure the anxiety finally. Um, here you see the results of this Spielberg state and tried anxiety inventory. On the left side you see the state anxiety, on the right side the trade anxiety. There is no cutoff point in this inventory that shows, uh, like other uh, questionnaires, that you have a cutoff to, to say above this level you have this and this disorder. That's not the case with this. So we were interested in difference of anxiety. We said um, the, the treatment effect will show up by the difference from baseline to follow-up two months. And so here you see in both um, 
um, branches of this uh, anxiety inventory, we have um, a lowering, a significant lowering in uh, anxiety compared to placebo. It's a bit more difficult with the, st with the quality of life questionnaire. Um, as I said, there is, um, uh, with the quality of life, it changes a lot when people have, for instance, an uh, infection of respiration, um, then this changes a lot. So we could not use it very well. Um, the, the scales you see on the y-axis is the percentage of scoring, and it means the higher it is, the better it is. So um, on, the, on the right side you see, for instance, when, when you look at the green lines, the dark green line is for, the, for um, LSD. It says, here it says um, VRM means verum, and verum means full dose condition. PLC means placebo, and global health, uh, GHS is global health. And you see with the, with the LSD group, it goes up from 36% to uh, 49, as with the placebo, it remains, uh, it, it doesn't go up that much, but it is not a significant difference, I have to say that. And it is the same with the functioning group, this is the blue lines, you also see an improvement, uh, which is more uh, pronounced with the verum, that means full dose group, and also with uh, the symptoms, um, the symptoms branch of this questionnaire. So, we can say even um, with this uh, quality of life questionnaire shows a better improvement for the, the full dose group than for the placebo group, but these uh, uh, differences are not so pronounced like in the, in the anxiety inventory. Um, these through um, pictures show what we already know. And, um, it is that LSD does not cause um, elevation of blood pressure or heart rate as compared to placebo. So they stay the both at time zero, at time four hours when it is the, at the maximum of the, of the action, and then after eight, eight hours when, the, when it is over. Um, I, me personally, I, I have a, a theory about that because it's impressive, it, it says, LSD as a drug does not affect blood pressure and heart rate as a drug. But even the psychological process, which may be um, very loaded, does not affect blood pressure and heart rate. And it means something like people stay in a bodily relaxed state so that blood pressure and heart rate are not changing. And this is quite Im uh, an important finding, I would say. And now... Show you some data about safety. Um, we checked um, uh, after every session what the participants mentioned um, as side effects or adverse events during the LSD action. It is to say that all adverse events they mentioned were mild and temporarily. Um, that was what mentioned the most was uh, chills, feeling cold. Some people um, four mentioned anxiety, although I wouldn't, me personally, I wouldn't say this is necessarily a, an adverse event. It's, it's part of the process. We are going with the participants and we are helping them to overcome anxiety. So it is also necessary that they uh, experience that. Nevertheless, we checked it as a, a part of our safety measures. And this also, the psychotropic um, LSD effects is what we expect that will take place. It's not something necessarily an adverse event that is not, uh, it should be there. Uh, let's say visual perception altered. I mean, with LSD, it's clear we will have that. So we can say, um, we, we didn't have drug-related severe adverse events like suicidal crisis or psychosis or need for additional treatment or hospitalization. Um, 
We had no mentioning of side effects in the daily diaries um, the patients made, so no mentioning of bad trips or flashbacks or something like that. And the next day there were, were also uh, only a few of the participants. One said he, she feels still cold and body image alterations were mentioned, uh, which is in a way something was not really negative. Nevertheless, we, we collected that. And this was all, uh, all of these were self-limiting, and then the next um, psychotherapy session, it was not mentioned again. The states of consciousness questionnaire um, was administered after every LSD session, and you see the, the red bars are, is the full dose condition, as the blue bars is the placebo condition. You easily can differentiate when placebo was, was administered or LSD. So states of consciousness questionnaire does fit to measure what we want to measure, um, namely the, the quality and the intensity of the state. What it means for the, for the therapeutic process, that's another thing. I come back to that. I want to say something about the limitations of the work we did. Limitations maybe sounds a bit negative. We should say, well, what did we learn from that um, pilot study? Uh, limitations of statistical evaluation. The number of participants in this study was small, 12. And in particular, the placebo group was very small, 4, which clearly limits the statistical possibilities and the validity of comparisons between the LSD and the placebo group. Nevertheless, LSD lowered state and trait anxiety scores on one hand compared to placebo and on the other hand over time that at the 12 months follow up uh, as within LSD group factor lowered it. Then I want to say something about the blinding. LSD is a highly potent psychoactive drug and participants and therapists normally can tell a short time after in ingestion whether full dose or inactive uh, or active placebo was administered. Because of this known problem with blinding, we choose an active placebo as a sub-threshold dose of 20 micrograms LSD to generate some mild and short-time effects of LSD uh, without producing the effect profile of 200 microgram LSD. For all 24 blinded sessions, both ther therapists and the participants had to guess whether full dose or active placebo was administered. Both therapists guessed the condition correctly and were very certain in 22 sessions and certain in two sessions. The participants guessed the condition correctly and were very certain in 20 sessions, certain in one session, and somewhat certain in two sessions. It has to be noted that all assumptions were correct. It shows that classical double-blind is difficult to achieve for investigating mind-altering drugs even when taking an active placebo. The methodology of research. This study was designed following the, good rules of, following the rules of good clinical practice, GCP, established by the International Conference on Harmonization, ICH. We chose the so-called gold standard of drug research, that means a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study. However, LSD was not given as a curing or symptom-reducing medicine in the classical sense of medical treatment, where the medicine itself is the entire treatment. In this study, LSD was given as an adjunct to psychotherapy, as a catalyst to initiate and facilitate a deep mind-manifesting state allowing the patient to encounter his own inner realities. This dreamlike journey was integrated into a specially designed psychotherapeutic process. In this sense, LSD is primarily part of a psychotherapeutic technique that could be evaluated using the methods of psychotherapy research, such as comparison of different techniques, comparison with waitlist groups, etc. The methodology of LSD-assisted psychotherapy. 
Our findings in the states of consciousness questionnaire are consistent with the previous literature, mainly from Griffiths and collaborators, published on those response to psilocybin-assisted psychotherapy using this measure. It suggests that 200 micrograms of LSD is a medium-high dose that allows only in, an, in a minority of cases to experience a so-called mystical experience. However, what the mystical experience means for the treatment outcome is not clear by our findings. When comparing um, states of consciousness questionnaire total scores with changes in, in, in anxiety inventory scorings, before and after the LSD session, no obvious relationship can be demonstrated. On the other side, there is no obvious negative relationship between the ne nadir, that means the negative scorings in the SOCQ that reflects unpleasant experiences and the changes in, sta in the anxiety inventory. We therefore can hypothesize that other factors like personal integration of the experience linking the experience to everyday life, quality of relationship to the therapists, etc., may be of importance. More generally speaking, we can su uh, suggest that experiencing a mystical type of journey not automatically leads to reduction of psychological symptoms like anxiety. In fact, many of the participants mentioned in the therapeutic talks and, and in the follow-up interviews that they discovered or discovered again the importance of good relationship to family and friends that they saw they should clarify conflictual relationship and they want to be aware of the quality of time they have and not of the quantity. Treatment manual. At the moment no treatment manual for LSD assisted psychotherapy exists. Questions of set, for example preparation of the participant instruction about body awareness, breathing techniques, etc., and setting, for example, co-therapist model, male-female therapists, use of music, etc., should be precisely described, especially when comparing different drugs used in psycholytic or psychedelic therapy. Dosage, number of sessions, treatment setting. For this population, a medium-high dosage of 200 micrograms LSD was chosen for the full-dose condition. This turned out to be appropriate to provide a safe first LSD experience. However, a majority of participants stated that they would prefer more than two LSD sessions and a longer treatment phase. Our data shows that after each LSD session, anxiety scorings were decreasing. Participants in psycholytic therapy of Leuner underwent an average of 26.7 psycholytic sessions and the participants in a Swiss population were treated with 6.8 sessions in an average. For this pilot study, a short treatment phase with a restricted number of LSD sessions in a single person treatment setting was the maximum we could achieve out of political concerns and fi financial limitations. It is obvious that a psychotherapeutic treatment model outside of research restrictions would include a flexible number of LSD sessions and a therapy duration that reflects the process of the patient. Me personally, I would prefer a group treatment setting for further work with LSD psychotherapy. I experienced this to be more effective than individual treatment. We can conclude uh, all participants report a personal benefit, uh, even in the follow-up interviews. Uh, in an email note, uh, the, the person who was responsible in the Swiss Ministry of Health said that all things con considered, it was good, and from my part, we can continue. And then, when we take into account that it was a pilot study with methodological limitations, we can report a success and we can look forward to continue with LSD-assisted psychotherapy. And the future, um, I think it would be necessary to have experienced therapists who can continue, and uh, by experienced I mean you need to have self-experience. You cannot treat LSD psychotherapy without knowing what's going on when you take it. 
it would be good to have a treatment manual, as, as a, a therapy manual, as I said before. And me personally, I don't think that LSD will be a, a prescription medicine the next, I don't know what, uh, 50 years. So that I focus mainly on on uh, exceptional use of the of scheduled drugs. So LSD would be uh, again or uh, a scheduled drug, but in in certain cases you could do this. We call it in Switzerland. Maybe it's the same here. Compassionate use. So I'm at the quite very end. I want to end up with a quote of the Harry Potter novel. At the very end of the seventh book, uh, Harry Potter is uh, with Dumbledore in the King's Cross Station in, in London and Harry asks the dead Dumbledore, tell me one last thing, is this real or has this been happening inside my head? And Dumbledore beamed at him, of course it is happening inside your head, Harry, but why on earth should that mean that it's not real? Thank you.